Hello class, this is Ms. Augustine, and today I'm going to walk you through um, how to use a Vernier Graphical Analysis app, which is an app that we'll use with our Chromebooks along with some temperature probes and a GoLink USB interface. So to begin with, you're going to log into your Chromebook and you're going to click on Chrome Apps and that will take you to the Abington School District approved apps page and from here you'll have to scroll down to the graphical analysis app which is this one and you'll click on it and that should lead you to a screen that says launch app um, the Chromebooks that we use on our cart have all got this um, graphical analysis app already installed, so you should just need to click Launch App. And then from the Launch App, you'll get this screen, and what we're going to be doing is um, sensor data collection. So now for the equipment that we're using, the GoLink USB interface has a plug right here. It's kind of like a phone jack, and that um, will plug into the temperature probes. Um, there are other probes available, but for now, we'll use the temperature probe. And then the other end of it plugs into your USB port or one of the USB ports on the Chromebook. And then the temperature sensor looks like this. So this is the temperature sensor here. And then at this end, there's this white phone jack, and that again gets plugged into the GoLink. So now, briefly, I want to talk about the setup. Sometimes we'll be using the temperature probes in a test tube. Other times, for this first lab, we'll just have it plugged into a beaker. And whether we're using a hot plate or a Bunsen burner, we don't want to melt the cords. So you'll see the cord is being rooted around the ring stand and through a um, clamp to prevent it from melting because that would be negative. So then once you plug in your um, GoLink and it gets plugged in with the USB interface, this screen comes up and this screen has a couple things I want to point out. For starters, nothing will start collecting until you click collect, but before you collect, you want to come down to the bottom where it says mode and you want to click on the mode button. So then from the mode button, you will get this screen and this screen has a few things I want to point out. First off, you want to pick the time units as seconds and then um, for the labs that we do it's helpful to have um, start and stop be manual so make sure that you select manually for both start data collection and end data collection. So then it will start collecting your data. Uh, literally what I did here was I took some ice water and dumped some hot water into it so that I could generate some sort of a curve and then I clicked stop so that's why you'll see up here it says collect again and then I wanted to show you um, your display options so up here in the upper right hand corner there's this little funny icon and you're going to click on that and that's going to give you your display screen options and so what I generally do is as it's circled here I click on graph and table together and then that gives you the graph alongside of the data. So you can actually see the data points that were collected. And um, since I put in um, the time as seconds, it generates the axes labels for me. And it knows it's a temperature probe, so it's also giving me here my y-axis as temperature in degrees C, and you'll notice those are here as well. But just for the sake of argument, I've circled here the, um, the display options for the columns. So if you click on those little three dots, then you'll get column options. And if you don't like the titles that they've put in, you can actually 
um, add them in here at this point. And so your column options, you can name them and you can put in the units. You can decide how many decimal places. You can put it in scientific notation and then click apply. So it gives you all kinds of options as far as your um, columns, uh, titles, and units. So then the next thing I wanted to show you is down here. There are various graph options. So you'll click on that funny little icon in the bottom left-hand corner. And what that will bring up is this menu, lots of menus. And so for instance, if you wanted to apply a fit curve, if we we're going to apply a line, or if you wanted to annotate, if you're doing more than one uh, curve on the same uh, set of data, you could add uh, labels to the various curves. You could add predictions. For our purposes today, I'm going to show you how to edit the graph options, namely give it a title. So here in graph ed edit graph options, you'll see the first thing it gives you the option of is adding a title. Um, you can decide what the um, range is for your x-axis and your y-axis. Here I'm leaving it as automatic, whatever it was generated during data collection. You can also see that you can choose to display just data points. You can have it make a line or connect the points, or you can show both. So I chose to leave it as a line. So now um, you'll see that I've added a title heating curve of water. So now we have some more options up here that we can explore. For instance, if you click on this little folder where it says Untitled, you can either begin a new experiment, you can open one that you've saved, you can save as, and you can export. So as far as saving goes, if you're on a Chromebook, it's going to give you the Google Drive, um, and it would go onto your drive. And obviously you could then pick what folder you want it in, give it a new folder if you want, which would be titled uh, Vernier Graphical Analysis. And then down here at the bottom in the circle you can see, you can give it a title, and they all end up with this AMBL um, extension. So then the other thing you can do is you can choose to export, and I um, recommend that you save the raw data and also export it. And when you export it for purposes of um, inserting it into your lab report, for instance, you are then given the choice whether you want it as a dot CSV or a graph image. And once again, it will ask you to save it and you will save it to your Google Drive. In this case, I'm saving it as a um, ping. And so some final thoughts on this, uh, things to remember. When you're heating a sample using the temperature probes and the GoLink, uh, our first priority should be to not melt the cords. Um, as you might expect, these are expensive and melting the cord will render them useless. The second thing you want to do is make sure that in order not to melt the cords, that you're winding the temperature cord away from the beaker, looping it up over the clamp and ring stand so that it's out of the way of whatever your heat source is, be it hot plate or Bunsen burner, and then you're going to refer to the setup as I showed you before in the illustration to help you with the setup options. And then finally, things to remember when you're using these devices, we want them to be available for everyone, um, so we're going to um, be nice about how we put them away. So there are rubber bands. You're going to secure them neatly with rubber bands and then bring them back up to the box that I'll probably have in the front of the room for your use. So that is all for now. Um, we will be using these probes a bunch this year, so hopefully you'll find them uh, to be useful and um, easy to incorporate into our lab reports. This is Ms. Augustine signing off.